Hi, my name is Megan LaFramboise. I'm the orthopedic neuroscience navigator here at St. David's Medical Center. Thank you for trusting us with your care. We have an exceptional program here at St. David's Medical Center. It is important that you complete this online program because we will teach you all you need to know about the joint replacement process. The class will discuss what to expect while in the hospital after surgery with a focus on pain management, mobility, and preventing complications. This class will increase your knowledge to reduce anxiety, decrease the length of hospital stay, and help establish realistic expectations to improve surgical outcome. We hope you enjoyed this educational video and thank you for choosing St. David's Medical Center. Welcome to our Joint Replacement Preoperative Education class. Over the next 25 minutes, we will discuss a general overview of the joint replacement process and hospital stay at St. David's Medical Center. Any specifics to your procedure should be discussed directly with your surgeon. This class will provide education and empowerment about the joint replacement process and can help you identify techniques to decrease risk factors of complications after surgery. It will also help prepare you for your joint replacement surgery and help reduce anxiety about the surgical process. Our goal is to create expectations of what you will experience here at St. David's Medical Center and to assist with beginning the process for your transition back home after surgery. Our mission at St. David's Medical Center is to provide exceptional care to every patient every day with a spirit of warmth, friendliness, and personal pride. Our vision is to be the finest care and service organization in the world. Our St. David staff follows what we call the I care values, which include integrity, compassion, accountability, respect, and excellence. The goals of our facility are exceptional care, customer loyalty, and financial strength. We function under a patient-centered team approach when providing care at our facility. You can see here that you and your family members are at the center of our care team. Your surgeon and their physician's assistant are at the top. They are the individuals performing your surgery and they will see you every day while you're here at the hospital with us. A hospitalist is an internal medicine doctor that is consulted by your surgeon to assist with your medical care after your surgery. A pharmacist is heavily involved in our care team and manages all of your medications that you will take while in the hospital. The nursing team, both registered nurses and patient care technicians will be with you 24 hours a day. We have a day shift and night shift team that works 12 hour shifts. Our physical and occupational therapists will see you for therapy sessions twice a day and our nurse case manager will assist with discharge planning and durable medical equipment. Once you have made the decision for surgery, we recommend improving your nutrition through healthy eating. We encourage iron and protein rich foods, lean meats, fruits, vegetables, and grains. Notify your dentist of your upcoming joint replacement surgery. Your orthopedic surgeon does not want you to have any dental procedures for three months following your joint replacement surgery. Dental procedures can introduce bacteria into your bloodstream, which can increase your risk for infection. After this three month period, you will require oral antibiotics prior to any dental procedure for at least one year following your joint replacement. If you wish to obtain a handicap placard for your vehicle, contact your surgeon's office to get a prescription to bring to the DMV. Pre-surgical testing is ordered by your surgeon to be completed prior to your surgery to ensure that you are well enough to have your joint replacement procedure. Here are a few examples of tests that may be ordered. The tests that are ordered depend on your medical and surgical history. An EKG is a heart function test. Stickers are applied to your chest to determine if your heart is well enough for surgery. A chest x-ray is an x-ray of your lungs and heart. And a urinalysis is a sample of your urine. Blood tests or lab tests run on blood samples, and an MRSA swab is a swab of the inside of your nose. You will complete your testing seven to 10 days prior to your surgery. However, this testing can be done up to 60 days prior to surgery. You will complete your testing here at St. David's Medical Center or at your primary care physician's office if your surgeon has instructed you to do so. Our pre-surgical testing nurses will call you and obtain a list of your home medications and medical and surgical history. They then will assist you in making an appointment to come in in order to have your testing done. If your surgery is coming up and you have not heard from one of our pre-surgical testing nurses, please call the pre-surgical testing department at 512-544-3333 to make an appointment. 
please bring your driver's license and insurance cards with you to your appointment. If you have an advanced directive or medical power of attorney document and would like us to have this on file in your medical record, you may bring it with you to your appointment and we will make a copy. If you have been seen by a specialist to have testing done prior to your surgery, the pre-surgical testing nurses will instruct you to bring any copies of these medical tests in with you to your appointment. We do also ask that you bring in a list of your home medications. Though we go over this list with you on the phone, we would also like a written out copy to ensure that our list is complete and accurate. Please allow two to three hours for this appointment to complete the order testing. The Enhanced Surgical Recovery Program at St. David's Medical Center was developed to help you have an improved surgical outcome by recovering more quickly and safely after surgery. The benefits of the Enhanced Surgical Recovery Program include faster recovery, eating sooner after surgery, better pain control with fewer side effects, reduction of nausea or upset stomach after surgery, increased early movement and walking, shortened hospital stay, and returning to your normal life at a quicker rate. Get specific instructions from your surgeon regarding when to stop taking blood thinning medications prior to surgery. We typically ask that you stop taking these medications seven to 10 days prior to surgery. These medications include non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs, such as Motrin, Ibuprofen, Aleve, Celebrex, and Meloxicam. Certain herbal supplements like fish oil, vitamin E, and glucosamine, and prescription blood thinners like Coumadin, Aspirin, Plavix, and Xarelto. Please ask your doctor about taking your medications before surgery. The preoperative nurses will instruct you only on what medications to take on the day of your surgery. Before surgery, we recommend performing a safety check of your home. This includes removing throw rugs and tacking down loose carpeting. If you are able, remove electrical cords and other obstructions from your path so you will not have to lift your assistive device over these items when walking. Having adequate lighting during the nighttime is very important for your safety, so placing night lights in areas that you may walk to during the night is highly recommended. If you have a small pet that may stand close to your feet or is easily excitable, we recommend having someone there to assist you with your pet for the first few days after your surgery. You will be instructed by pre-surgical testing to shower with HIPAA soap, an antimicrobial soap that is used to prevent infection. You will shower with this soap for five days prior to surgery. On the day before your surgery, you will call pre-surgical testing at 512-544 3333 between 3 and 6 p.m. to check what time you should arrive to the hospital. If your surgery is scheduled for Monday, you will call the Friday beforehand. You are allowed to have clear liquids up to two hours before your surgery time. We ask that you do not have mints or chewing gum after midnight as this can trick your body into thinking you're about to eat something. If you have uncontrolled acid reflux or gastroparesis, we ask that you do not eat or drink anything after midnight. For all of our surgical patients, we require that you do not drink alcohol for 24 hours prior to surgery. If you normally consume alcoholic beverages regularly, please notify your surgeon. Though you will be provided a hospital gown when you come in for your surgery, you are not required to wear this gown for your entire hospital stay. You will wear the gown typically for the first day so that the staff is able to assess your incision site and manage your surgical drain if you have one. After this time, you may change into your own clothing. For our hip and knee replacement patients, we recommend loose fitting shorts or pants and knee length gowns, clothing that is easy to slide up over your incision site. For our patients having shoulder replacement surgery, we recommend button up shirts or large loose fitting t-shirts that are easy to slide up over your surgical arm. We encourage patients to bring glasses, hearing aids, and dentures in labeled containers. Bringing a list of your home medications with you on the day of your surgery is highly recommended as well, so that the nursing staff can ensure that we have your list accurately entered in your electronic health record. You will have some downtime in between your therapy sessions, so please feel free to bring your iPads, laptops, cell phones, and books with you. When coming in for your surgery, we recommend that you leave valuables such as jewelry at home. The hospital is not responsible for any lost or stolen items. St. David's has walkers in every room for patient use, so you do not need to bring your own assistive devices in with you to the hospital. 
For patient safety, the hospital will provide your medications to you. If a medication is available at a regular pharmacy, such as a CVS or Walgreens, we should carry it in our pharmacy. Medications that we do not carry include inhalers and experimental or compounded medications. The nurses in pre-surgical testing will instruct you on which medications to bring with you on the day of your surgery. Once at the surgery center, you will change into a hospital gown. Our staff will assist you with wiping down your entire body with antimicrobial CHG cloths to help prevent infection, and we'll place an IV so that we will be able to administer medications to you during and after surgery. You will discuss your allergies with your preoperative nurse and sign your surgical consent for surgery. An anesthesiologist or nurse anesthetist will meet with you and discuss the type of anesthesia they will be using during your surgery, and your surgical nurse will come in and meet you. Before you are taken to the operating room, your surgeon will come and mark your surgical site. When you are transferred into the operating room, your family will be escorted to the surgery center waiting room. You will be in surgery for about one and a half to two hours, though this time frame can change depending on the progress of your surgery. Your family will be contacted by the surgical nurse once the surgeon has started the procedure and will be updated throughout the surgery. Once the surgery is completed, the surgeon will either update your family members in the waiting room or call the contact number that they have on file. When your surgery is completed, you will be transferred into the post anesthesia care unit or the PACU for recovery. While in the PACU or recovery room, we will monitor your vital signs and pain level frequently. You will begin to wake up from anesthesia. Patients are usually in recovery for about one to two hours, depending on your progress. If you take longer to wake up from anesthesia, you may be in recovery longer. Once you are awake and stable, you will be transferred to your room on the fourth floor. This is where your family will be able to see you and you will be given a menu to start ordering food. Our orthopedic unit here at St. David's is four east. You will have a private room with access to our guest Wi-Fi account and a television with basic cable. We do not have set visiting hours. This means that your guests can come and go as they please. We do not lock the unit or hospital down at night. We provide recliner chairs in every room that fold out into a bed if you wish to have a guest stay overnight with you. Visitors can park in parking garage one and may park for free if they are over the age of 65. Most joint replacement patients will be in the hospital for one to two nights depending on progress, but some patients do stay longer. The staff at St. David's Medical Center participates in hourly rounding to ensure that we are meeting your needs. Our goal is to anticipate your needs before you even have to call for assistance. Someone from our staff, a registered nurse, patient care technician, or physical therapist, will be checking on you once an hour during the day and every two hours at night. We also perform bedside shift report during shift change. The staff will enter your room with the oncoming staff member and discuss your plan of care with you so that you can be involved in your care. Our communication board is used to keep you updated on your plan of care and your healthcare team. It is located on the wall of your hospital room and includes the name and phone numbers of the staff involved in your care, as well as the dietary and room service phone number. This board will also be used to record your daily goals. We have an example of getting out of bed and walking 150 feet. We will ask you at the start of our shift if there is something in particular you would like to accomplish during that shift, and we will record this on your whiteboard. We will do our very best to try and assist you in reaching your goal. Your pain management plan is also located on the whiteboard. We will write what pain medication we have you on, as well as the next time your dose is due, so that you are aware of how often you can take your medication. Depending on your surgeon's preference, you may have a surgical drain placed in your incision during surgery. This is used to collect the excess fluid from your incision site to help with swelling and bruising. The nursing staff will manage the care of your surgical drain, and this drain is usually removed on post-operative day one or two. Lab tests are performed the morning after surgery, and sometimes each day while you're here at the hospital, depending on your surgeon's preference and your recovery process. Bowel protocol is a very important part of your hospital stay. One of the most common side effects of narcotic pain medications and anesthesia is constipation. We will start you on a stool softener and or laxative beginning on post-operative day zero. Our meal service at St. David's Medical Center is called distinctive dining. It is very similar to room service. You may call the dining service between the hours of 6.30 a.m. and 7.30 p.m. to order your meals, which will be delivered within 45 minutes to an hour. 
We have a variety of menus for different dietary preferences, so let us know if you have a specific dietary need. For your safety, all of the medications from our pharmacy are given a barcode that the nursing staff can scan in order to record the administration into your electronic health record. This helps us keep a record of what medications you receive while you are in the hospital. We ask that you never take your own supply of medication without approval from your registered nurse or doctor. The nursing staff will explain the purpose and potential side effects of all of the medications we give you. Due to possible drug interactions, herbal medications that are not FDA approved are not allowed in the hospital, but you will often be able to resume these medications when you're discharged home, depending on your surgeon's orders. It is normal to feel some post-operative pain after a joint replacement surgery. Here at St. David's, we use a zero to 10 pain scale to assess your pain level. Zero being no pain and 10 being the worst pain imaginable. Communicating with your nurse and physician is the best way to achieve effective pain control. If a medication is not working for you, please let the staff know. We can work with you to determine the best pain management plan for you. We will establish a comfort goal, a pain level at which your pain is under control where you can rest, perform daily activities, and participate in therapy. Our goal is to keep your pain level controlled and keep you as comfortable as possible following your surgery. Oral pain medications are used as the primary form of pain relief after surgery. You will continue these medications when you are discharged home from the hospital. You will start this medication the afternoon or evening of surgery. It takes effect within about 30 to 45 minutes and lasts for four to six hours. These medications are most effective if taken on a routine basis, so we will keep you on a schedule while you are in the hospital. These can be narcotic or non-narcotic medications. IV pain medications are used as an as-needed basis if the oral medications are not working. These medications take effect within 10 to 15 minutes, but last for about two hours. Local anesthetic is a medication that is injected by your surgeon during your surgery into your incision site to numb the area. This medication lasts for 12 to 72 hours. Pain is very different and unique for every patient. Your prescribed pain medication will vary depending on your history and the severity of pain you are having. The side effects of narcotic pain medications include constipation, nausea or vomiting, respiratory depression and sleepiness, and itching. You will be very closely monitored by our staff while you receive pain medication at our facility. If you start to run out of your pain medication at home and you feel that you need more, please contact your surgeon's office for refills. Emergency room doctors will not refill pain medications. Icing after joint replacement surgery is very important. This will help control pain and swelling. Each patient will be provided with cold packs after surgery. These are applied to your surgical site immediately following your surgery and will be rotated every three to four hours with new cold packs. The set of four cold packs that you receive are yours to take home with you. Cold therapy units are typically used following shoulder replacement surgery. This motorized unit is filled with ice and water and is kept on your surgical site 24 hours a day. The ice will need to be replaced about every four hours. The potential complications following a joint replacement surgery include blood clots, pneumonia, and surgical site infection. A blood clot, also known as a deep vein thrombosis, can form in one of the more deep veins in your body, usually in the legs. Pneumonia is a lung infection. The signs and symptoms of surgical site infection will be discussed in a few minutes, but reporting these early is very important to your recovery. There are simple activities that you can do to prevent these potential complications. Your surgeon has specific orders to help prevent blood clots. Anticoagulant medication, also known as a blood thinner, is a medication ordered by your surgeon that you will start following your surgery. The type of medication depends on your surgeon's preference and your medical and surgical history. You will take this medication for two to four weeks, depending on the type of medication that is ordered for you. Tedhose are white stockings that are worn on both legs to prevent swelling and blood clots. You will wear these until your follow-up appointment. The sequential compression device is worn on both legs while in bed to compress the calves. This helps with circulation to prevent blood clots. The incentive spirometer is used to help you take deep breaths following your surgery to keep your lungs open. The nursing staff will instruct you on how to use this when you are admitted to the hospital. 
You will use this at least 10 times per hour while awake. The hospital follows strict infection prevention protocols. The staff performs hand hygiene regularly before and after entering your hospital room and before doing any dressing changes or handling your incision. You will be given IV antibiotics prior to and within 24 hours of surgery. You will not need to go home on oral antibiotics after your surgery. The signs and symptoms of surgical site infection include redness or increased pain at your incision site and change in your incision site color, odor, or drainage amount. If you suspect you have an infection or your pain is out of control, call your surgeon or your home health care provider. Your incision will be covered with a dressing immediately following your surgical procedure. The type of dressing depends on your surgeon's preference and the type of surgery you are having. If your surgeon uses gauze and tape, this dressing will need to be completely waterproofed before showering. If your surgeon uses an Aquacel dressing, this dressing is water resistant. You will need to cover the dressing with Press and Seal Saran Wrap when showering at home. You cannot submerge this dressing in water, so you will not be able to take a bath or go in a pool until the dressing is removed and you are cleared by your surgeon. You may shower post-operative day one following your surgery. The nursing staff can assist you with showering. The best way to prevent blood clots, pneumonia, and constipation is to get up and move. We strongly encourage all of our patients to get out of bed, participate in therapy sessions, and to take walks. This will significantly help your recovery. It is important that you take proper safety precautions and ask for assistance before getting out of bed. Do not get up without assistance. The nursing staff is trained to assist with walking, standing, changing positions, and helping you get out of bed. You will be considered a high fall risk following your joint replacement surgery. This is due to possible decreased strength after surgery, anesthesia and pain medications, local anesthetic or nerve block, and anticoagulant medications that can make you more likely to be injured from a fall. You will receive a pair of yellow socks with a matching yellow wristband upon admission to the fourth floor. This will notify the staff that you are a high fall risk and that you need assistance with getting up and walking. Your safety is one of our main priorities. You will start your physical and occupational therapy either the afternoon of your surgery or morning after surgery. You will see both a physical and occupational therapist while you're here at St. David's Medical Center. These sessions will be twice a day and are performed in your hospital room and in the hallways of the fourth floor. The therapists are consulted by your surgeon for mobility and safety training and activities of daily living. If you have stairs in your home, our therapist will teach you how to safely go up and down a flight of stairs following your surgery. On the day of your discharge, your surgery team will meet with you and determine that you are ready to go home. Your nurse may need to obtain approval from the other physicians involved in your care to make sure that you are medically stable to be discharged home. Our case manager will make arrangements for your equipment and continued therapy. Once we have received all of the appropriate orders, your nurse will give you printed discharge instructions, including an updated home medication list. Please take the time to review your instructions with your nurse and ask any questions you may have. Our expected discharge time is 11 a.m., so if you are able, please have a ride available and ready to pick you up at that time. If you do not have a follow-up appointment already scheduled, you will need to call and make one when you are discharged home from the hospital. The nursing staff will provide instructions on when to make your follow-up appointment upon discharge. Typically, these appointments are scheduled one to two weeks from the day of your surgery, depending on the type of surgery you had and your surgeon's preference. At this visit, your surgeon will remove any stitches from your incision site and perform a dressing change if needed. Do not resume driving until you are cleared to do so by your surgeon and while taking narcotic medications. Thank you for participating in our educational video, and we look forward to seeing you for your joint replacement surgery.
I'm Troy Dill. I'm the nurse case manager for the orthopedic unit at St. David's Medical Center, Austin. I'm talking about the discharge equipments and therapies that you're going to need. Now, what I talk about uh, today is just going to cover 95% of my patients, and it's a brief overview. So for all my cases, what I expect you're going to need is a two-wheel rolling walker. If you've already got one, that's fantastic. Um, if you don't, I'll work on ordering one for you. We can get that ordered and delivered in about four to six hours for private insurance. When I say delivered, I'm talking about here to the hospital room, so you have it in the trunk of your car when you're going home. Uh, for Medicare, well, we'll order it. A lot of times you might have to go and pick it up from the certified vendor that Medicare requires. But either way, we're expecting you need that walker for about two weeks, about 10 days, two weeks, and your doctor normally, he'll tell you, or the home physical therapist will tell you when you can graduate off that walker and move either a cane or nothing. The rolling walker, we expect all of our patients are gonna need. Now, some other equipment I'm gonna talk about right now, you may or may not need, but I just want you to be aware of what's out there. So what we're gonna be looking at is like a bedside commode or a shower chair. Now, the insurance companies, uh, for a bedside commode, they may cover that. Shower chair, they may not. Uh, Medicare won't cover a bedside commode unless you don't have a toilet in your house. Uh, so the bedside commode, what we're looking at is not so much to use it at the bedside. We're expecting you're able to walk, get up and walk household distances after discharge. But we're looking at is to use it like a riser, set it over your toilet, and so that way you've got arm rails and a seat that's elevated to just help you get up and down. This is really for patients who are having problems right now before your surgery, getting up and down off the toilet. The bedside commode, if it's not covered by your insurance, that is something you can find at retail stores. You know, Walgreens, Walmart, CVS, Amazon, Lowe's, Home Depot, a lot of places. Uh, generally for like 60 to $70. So with a shower chair, any equipment for the showering, uh, the insurance companies won't cover that stuff. So we just need to look at uh, when you go home, you just need to evaluate if you need this stuff. So best case scenario is you go home, you've got a walk-in shower at your house, and you've got a bench built into it. That's perfect. Uh, but if you don't have a bench, well then you can look at buying like a shower chair. It's essentially just a, a cheap chair, waterproof. You can buy them at any of those retail stores uh, for generally about $30. Uh, but now if you've got a tub shower combo is your only way of taking a shower, well then there I want you to be really safe. So at that point, if you're not safe that first day you're at home, well then, hey, have a seat, do a sponge bath, that's, that's the easy part. Uh, but if it continues for a few days where it's, you just can't get over that sill safely, well then maybe you need to look at getting like a tub transfer bench. And essentially it's something like this where it's two legs that sit in the tub, two legs sit outside the tub, so you can sit down safely outside of the tub, swing your legs across. It does get in the way of your shower curtain or the door, so it could let water pool right outside your door. I do want you being really careful about that. I don't want you slipping. Um, these are normally about 60 to $70. You can buy them at retail stores. Uh, but I want you waiting and seeing what you really need before you go home. So when you get home, you can wait two or three days, and that's when you can really assess if you need any of this equipment. Because again, this is stuff that the insurance companies typically won't cover. So that covers all the equipment, the durable medical equipment. So next I want to talk about the, the disposition, like what's going to happen after your surgery. And we're going to work on setting you up to go home with home physical therapy, but also really importantly to have a friend or a family member there with you for the first two to three days at least. You know, mostly just to call for help if you need it, but also to help you out around the house just a little bit. Now, if they can stay with you for the first two weeks, that's, that's absolutely fantastic. Besides having that friend or family member there with you, what we're looking to set up is the home physical therapy. I use home physical therapy, home health company that's interchangeable. So when I talk about home health care, your, your surgeon has a preference, but your choice wins. So if you've got a home therapy or home health company you prefer, that's your choice. Otherwise, I'll talk to you and I'll offer you your surgeon's preference. I'll get your permission, we'll send a referral out, and we need to find out two things from them. And one, are they in network with your insurance? And two, can they come out and service your location? Now the ideal is that we get it all set up, and this should happen about 95% of the time, we get the home health your doctor wants. And they should come out every other day for about two weeks. Each visit lasts about 45 minutes to an hour. Generally, it's just for physical therapy, because that's really all you're going to need. We're going to be getting you up the first night of your surgery, you know, that night. So you're going to be up and moving, and we're going to get you going pretty quickly there. So there, there's some combinations of private insurance and location where I just can't find an agency willing to accept. And that's generally about like 5% of my patients, but, but it's a possibility. If that's the case, we might have to jump to the second step uh, a little bit earlier. 
Now the second step is normally after you go and see your doctor at your two week follow up, you go in and see him and he normally sets you up for outpatient therapy. That's where you go to a physical therapist office or a rehab center, but somewhere convenient for you. And so if you've got a place down the street and you'd like to use them or you use somebody in the past, you can continue using them, it's your choice. Otherwise, typically your doctor or his PA will be the one who help you set up for that outpatient physical therapy and they'll send the orders over from his office. It used to be the case where all of our patients would come in and stay for like five to seven days and then we'd send them to another facility, like a skilled nursing or a rehab facility, and you'd go there and stay for another two to three weeks. That just doesn't happen anymore. We've made such advancements in orthopedics that nowadays you're going home post-op day one or two and you're already up and walking and you're doing really well. Essentially, it's to the point where the insurance companies don't authorize us to send you to these facilities. And I just want you to be aware that they're only gonna be looking at you know severe medical criteria to meet these points. And we're talking things like uh, Parkinson's or having a previous stroke. They're not gonna take into consideration you know, what they consider social issues, which are things like uh, living in a 10th floor walk up with 15 kids and no elevator access and nobody else to help you. But they also don't take into consideration other like orthopedic factors, like if your other knee is starting to hurt and you're gonna need that surgery soon. That doesn't play into their ability to accept. And that's for both private insurance and Medicare. That concludes my portion of today's presentation. We look forward to reaching out and speaking with you either post-op day one, the day after your surgery, or via phone if you have one of those Friday cases. At this point, I just want to say that I appreciate that you chose St. David's Medical Center, Austin, and I'd like you to have a good day. Hi, my name is Brian and this is Lena. We are physical therapist assistants here at St. David's Medical Center. Today we're going to be going over post-operative total knee and total hip exercises. The following exercises are for total knee and total hip post-op. Ankle pumps, moving your ankles forward and backward. 10 reps, three to four times per day. Quad sets, tighten your quad, hold three seconds, 10 reps, three to four times per day. Hill slides, first bend your knee and your hip as far as you can, then use sheet to assist further into the range of motion. 10 reps, three to four times per day. Short arc knee extension. First, flex your foot. Keep the back of the knee in contact with the roll. Raise your lower leg up. Hold and then relax. 10 reps, three to four times per day. Knee extension stretch. Place foam roller under lower leg Allow gravity to straighten the knee for 15 minutes, three to four times per day. Straight leg raises. Bend non-operative leg. Then you're gonna flex your foot on the operative side. Tighten your quad and raise your leg no higher than the knee that's bent. And relax. Repeat 10 times, three to four times per day. Glute sets, squeeze buttocks, hold for three seconds, 10 reps, three to four times per day. Lateral leg slides. On operative side, point toe up towards the sky. Move leg out to the side and back in. 10 reps, three to four times per day. 
Performing these exercises will be important to your recovery time. Thank you for choosing St. David's Medical Center.